Okay, welcome. In the next few lectures, we are going to look at multiple transaction cash flow streams. Up to now, we've been working with single cash flows, where we have a single present value that we move through time. But before we continue with multiple transaction cash flows, we will do a little bit of revision on the previous lecture, the changes in interest rate. Now, if you go to the exercises, at the back of chapter 1. For exercises on section 1.10 to 1.12, you should be able to do numbers 1 to 4 after the previous lecture. So we will start by just looking at number 4. 20,000 rands is invested for 10 years at an interest rate of 10% per annum compounded annually. At the end of the first three years, a withdrawal was made. The balance was reinvested for the remaining period at 12% per annum compounded annually, and then yielded an amount of 30,000 rands. Calculate the amount withdrawn at time t3. Okay, so I start out with my timeline, and I know that at time t0, I have 20,000 rands. Then at time T3, I withdraw a certain amount of money. Let's call the amount that we withdraw, let's call it X. Okay, and then at time T10, we have 30,000 rands. And we would like to know what this X is. We also know that the interest rate in from T0 from T0 to T3 is 10% per annum compounded annually and from T3 to T10 it is 12% per annum compounded annually. Okay, so like we did in, with the examples on changes in interest rate, we will also split this up into two parts. So we will first start from T0 to T3. So the future value at time T3 will be my present value, which is 20,000 rands. And my interest rate is 10% per annum compounded annually, so... That will be 0 0.1 and it is for three years so that gives me the future value of 26,620 rands and then I subtract or I withdraw a certain amount X and I reinvest this amount for seven years so let's just continue on the next page so then if I move from T3 to T10, my future value at time T10 will be my present value. Now my present value is the 26,620 rands um, from the previous um, period minus the X, the amount that I've withdrawn. So my present value is the following. So that is, this here is my present value. And then I multiply it. And my interest rate for T3 to T10 is 12% per annum compounded annually. So that will then be 0 0.12. And I invest it for 7 years. And I know that this is equal to 30,000 rands. So now I can solve for my X. Now, if we do a little bit of manipulation here, this is then equal to 30,000 rands.
And then from this I can solve that my x is 13,049 rands 42 cents. Okay, now we can continue to multiple transaction cash flow streams. Now these describes investments where money is invested at different time periods and return on the investment could take place at different time periods. Investors need to decide whether it's a better option to invest in such a project or to rather place the money in a bank. Now in this section we are going to look at two methods that we can use to assess these different scenarios, the net present value and the internal rate of return. In this lecture, we are going to look at the net present value. A business person providing capital for a project um, will want a good return from the money invested. Some method of comparing the capital outlay with the expected return is necessary to determine if this investment should proceed. The net present value in PV of a cash flow is a method to evaluate the feasibility of an investment proposal. So the net present value determines the present value, the value at time point T0 of all inflows and outflows achieved by a proposed investment. When a business person appraises a project, the incoming amounts are referred to as inflows and the costs as the outflows. The business person sets a base date and all the inflows and outflows relative to this date is determined. So all the inflows and outflows will be moved through time to a base period at time point T0. So the general base date is the start of the project T0 and all cash flows involved are determined relative to this point in time. So we need to move all the cash flows to the same point in time so that we can compare them. So the net present value is equal to all the inflows and outflows and we will use negatives to indicate outflows and positives to indicate inflows. And then the criteria, criteria based solely on monetary terms for deciding the feasibility of an investment are that if the net present value is positive, then we accept the investment. And when the net present value is negative, then we reject the investment. So it's always easier if we look at an example. Suppose an investor is asked to invest 5,000 rands in a project and is informed he can expect a risk-free return of 2,000 rands in 18 months time and 5,000 rands in three years time. Now currently the 5,000 rands is sitting in the savings account earning interest at 12% per annum compounded monthly. So what conclusion should the investor make based solely on monetary terms? Should the investor um, go for this project or should the investor leave the 5,000 rands in the saving account? So that is the question. Okay, so we do that by setting up a timeline At time T0, the investor puts in 5,000 rands. So I will indicate that with a negative because that's outflow. It's money that you invest. It's money out of your pocket. Then after 18 months, the investor will receive 2,000 rands. And after three years, that will be then time T36, the investor will receive a further 5,000 rands. So the question now is, is this a good um, investment option or should the investor just leave the 5,000 rands in the savings account at an interest rate of 12% per annum compounded monthly? 
to be able to evaluate this project, we will calculate the net present value. That means that we move all the inflows and outflows to time t0, the present value. Um, so I want to move this 2,000 rands to time t0 and this 5,000 rands to time t0. The net present value is then equal to this 5,000 rands uh, at time point t0 and I indicate it with a negative because that is an outflow. It's money that you've invested. It's out of your pocket um, into the project. And then the 2,000 rands is uh, money that you receive after 18 months. And I want to move this 2,000 rands to time point T0. So I'm actually moving it from the future to the present. Now you will remember that if we want to get if we have the future value and we want to get the present value, then we multiply it with 1 plus the interest rate. Okay, so that was 12% per annum compounded monthly. So that's 0 0.12 divided by 12. And to move it backwards, it's to the minus 18. Plus then the 5,000 rands. And I want to move it to time t0. for 36 months. And then I get a net present value of 166 rands and 66 cents. So now because this net present value is positive, we can say um, a return of more than 12% per annum compounded monthly is expected if the investor chooses to finance this proposal his expected return for the project will be better than if he left the money in the savings account.